like you to hit on is that master insurance policies for condo projects. We've been seeing significant increases on condo fees here in Florida, you know, primarily. I mean, we do business all around the country, but I'll just, let's just focus on Florida. Um, some of their master insurance policy premiums have been doubling. Yeah. At renewal, like going from three hundred thousand dollars a year to six hundred thousand dollars a year. <laughs> so, yeah. first time home buyers. Yeah, we'll talk about condo, it. Yeah, first time home buyers buying in a condo community where their condo fee was four hundred bucks a month, and now it's eight hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want me to? You want me to start on that, or just go ahead? Yeah. And start it, talking? It, 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 just you could whatever flow you want to do. Just hit on that if you okay. can at some point. Yeah, I will. It's in my notes. So I got, I got okay. you. So uh, we'll Perfect. talk about that. I just want to, so there are quite a few updates to, uh, to kind of go over um, or just some things just maybe to remind you of as well. So um, there is some good news out there. And I think that's probably where I'd like to start. Um, I think it, there's so much negative news, I guess, uh, when it comes to insurance sometimes. Um, we really are starting to see companies, uh, Re basically relieve some of those strict guidelines. Now, it's not like all of them are doing it, but we are seeing a few of our uh, more significant uh, companies that we write a lot with have started just easing up on some of those restrictions. And uh, one that I think is is pretty significant, but I don't, I don't want to get too overboard on it, is um, a lot of y'all remember that we used to have a lot of options when it came to you know, hey, we need to get a roof replaced, um, you know, in order for the sale to go through. This insurance company is going to allow it 30 days after closing. And and then that market over the last year or two has just kind of dried up. And so everything has had to be focused on the seller side, trying to get those roofs replaced uh, before closing. And as a result of that, you've seen one good thing, I think, that's come out of it is a lot of roofers have started taking payment at closing. So they'll replace it before closing but then their payment is part of the closing, um, which has been a great a great win, I think. Um, but we've seen Citizens and now we've seen Security First, which is another company that we have written a lot with in the past. Um, Citizens is approving some of those 30 day after closing roof replacements. So basically you get the contract in place within 30 days after closing, it's gotta be, the roof has gotta be replaced. They're, they have, Approved some and denied some. Uh, they have they have a lot of guidelines in there. Uh, you have to have a a solid completion date is one of the main things. Um, if if you don't have that, then you're not gonna they're not gonna approve it. Um, Security First is saying now that they're gonna start doing that as well, but they have strict underwriting guidelines kind of across the board already. So uh, I wouldn't get you know, and I I spoke to some realtors at Keller Williams about this yesterday. Um, you know, I wouldn't look at this as, hey, we've got a lot of options or, hey, we can do roofs after 30 days. We're not there yet. Um, and you wouldn't want to bank on that. But there are some I think it's just a good thing to know that there are a couple of potential options. If there's no other way, if the seller's not going to do anything, well, let's at least see if we can get it approved through one of these other companies. So uh, gotcha. any questions about that? Does that make sense? I want to bring something up in regards to that on the loan side of things. So, you know, for. The lenders, you know, not every program allows like somebody to do an, what's called an escrow holdback for repair work to be done after the closing. OK, so in this situation, if I can get homeowners insurance, I don't even need to notify our underwriters that it's getting done after the closing as long as I have an acceptable homeowner insurance policy. So then I don't even need to get into an escrow holdback. And basically what we can do if the seller's paying for it, you know, we can just um if need be, we can just, you know, it's a seller paying for it. We can put it on the closing disclosure. We can put the name of the roofing company and the amount going to the roofing company coming out of the seller's proceeds, like on page two of the closing disclosure. And I don't need to bring it up with underwriting. So if we know that there's an escrow holdback, you know, the lender, like our typical rule of thumb, we'd want two estimates from two different contractors and we would hold back 150% of the highest repair estimate. Okay, so if the highest repair estimate is 20 grand, we would hold back 30 grand. Now, typically the most that we'll do is a $10,000 escrow holdback. However, I've done a roof before where, I mean, most roofs now are over $10,000, you know? Um, so, um, so, that, so we can do that. Now, if it's like a, 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 like a bond loan, you guys hear about like down payment assistance for the housing loans, 
they typically won't allow for that. So I wouldn't advertise that to our underwriter um, in, in that situation, because uh, as long as we get acceptable homeowner's insurance. Not that you care about that. I just wanted to point that out for some of the agents on there. Just be careful. And talk with the lender before writing. Sean, we'll, Sean, we'll do an escrow hold back for just about any 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 roof now. Lindsay, Lindsay will make exact. Yeah. I mean, it's 20, you know, yeah. she, we recognize the cost is 20, 20 sometimes 30000 to put a roof on. So we'll do that. Okay. And Annie just mentioned we can do it on the uh, uh, bond loans now for Florida housing. Wasn't aware of that. So thank you, Annie. We're here to, we're here to help. Thanks, Annie. Perfect. <laughs> Yeah, it's just another option. Um, not a huge option as of right now, but it's. I, I think it's a good step forward that we're seeing some of these options uh, come back a little bit because you know it was citizens not too long ago, even though their underwriting guidelines said they would approve these, they weren't approving them. It yeah, because I used to tell. They I, were just, I, used to, um, I used to tell agents all the time, "Hey, call Florida Best Quote. They got an HO HO eight policy that will you know um, not require any four point inspection. It won't require any you know wind mitigation inspection." That probably isn't readily available anymore, right? No, no, and th and that's what I think. I mean, maybe in some circumstances, but that's not a that's not something that we like. Oh, we've got this great option. You gotta, okay. you know, we have to dig, and that's that's what's kind of been the um, it's been a little frustrating because this is I think I've said before this was our calling card for a long time. Was I mean, we can fix anything, right? Any situation, and then all those underwriting guidelines really dried up, and it made it so much more difficult. Uh, you know, but as I've been speaking a lot, going around talking to realtors, I've really been stressing for quite a while, man, really, you know, get that uh, if you're on the listing side, especially uh, with the seller, um, get that uh, that uh, pre-listing inspection done. Find out what's going on with the house and get it fixed before you list the house. Don't get into this whole process that that we have to deal with right on our end where. OK, well, we're going to get the roof replaced, but we're not going to do it until the you know, we're going to work it out through the mortgage or we're going to work it out with the roofer to take payment at closing or we're going to try to get an insurance company to approve it 30 days after. close. I mean, there's so many things that can go wrong in that scenario. So I've just like and get everything fixed ahead of time. You know, if you really want to list it and you don't want to have any problems and you, you want to have a quick closing, have no issues with your home if you can. And I know there's certain situations where that's not going to happen, but um the goal is to try to do that. That's what we've been stressing. Yeah. And, fi and, and find a roofer that will be willing to get paid at closing if the seller, you know, is short is short on funds to pay for the roof prior to closing. Because you're right, like, you know, right. dealing with the issues later on, you know, certain lenders may not allow an escrow holdback. You know, before you yeah. know, doing an addendum, hey, seller replacing roof within 30 days after the closing, folding back funds at closing, make sure to get with the lender, you know, before you write that up. Because if you write that up as addendum one, and the appraisal happens to come in low uh, and you had to write a new addendum two and you don't want to provide addendum one to the lender. Well, if you have to pro if you provide addendum two to the lender, they're going to want addendum one. So before you do Correct. all that, you know, make sure you're checking, you know, um, you know, with, with the lender and make sure that's not going to be an issue. Right. And there's, there's a second part of this I wanted to bring up today specifically. And, and that's just a reminder of a situation that I, I, we might've talked about before, but not, there's a specific detail I want to get into. And that's just a reminder that remember all these home insurance companies have now started sending their own inspectors out after closing. And so if, if we try to, you know, and we don't, and I would never, but if you, there are agents out there and even maybe some realtors out there that, uh, you know, Hey, this house doesn't require a four point inspection. So, you know, there's time to get this done. We can take care of things after closing, yada, yada, whatever. And you got to, you basically try to insure a home that shouldn't have insurance with the issues that it has. And then you've got uh, an inspection company coming in after, you know, 14 days after closing. And they're like, oh, my gosh, that roof is horrible. Or, or you know, what are you doing with this? This hot water heater is, is a joke or this AC unit's completely rusted out. And I ran into this just two days ago with, with one of my realtors who's like, can you help this guy? And this guy is like a former NFL player that owns eight properties in the area. But he's trying to, you know, get insurance on this house that is, I mean, the roof is horrible. But he bought the house in 05. So it's an 18-year-old house. Uh, he, he bought it brand new. So a four-point inspection is not required on that home, right? And so... How are they going to know that the that the roof is 
horrible and the hot water heater is rusted out because both of those are the case. So that's us trying to say, no, you got to get those things replaced, man. You can't just, no, we're not, we're not going to just insure the home with this company over here with a great deal that they would not insure the home if they knew those problems were there. That's not, that's not ethical on our part. But then at the same time, what happens when they come out and inspect the house and they see, well, wait a minute, why did you insure this house in the, in the beginning when the roof is like that? Right. And so um, those are just some of the things to be considering. Uh, it's just the day of favors are over, you know, the days of, oh yeah, the insurance company won't have a problem with that. They're coming out and checking the house. And so even yeah, if a Jason, house doesn't I, require a four point. I, I flipped a couple of rental properties last year with you guys. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, same thing, like, you know, sent in the info. I did all the cell photos, interior, exterior, right. Got bound. Then post-closing about two, three weeks later, somebody came out, somebody pulled up to the front, no big deal. They took a drone. They went all around the house in, you know, front, back, all, all over the roof. So yeah, yeah, there's no way to hide anything, right? If you've got a tarp up there or sandbags or anything that, you know, maybe, you know, you think you can get away with like you could 10, 15 years ago, they're seeing everything. Exactly, man. And that, uh, thank you for bringing up that example, because there's still a lot of on the, and, and I try to get the realtors to understand this. It's like they switch hats, right? When they go from being the seller's agent to the buyer's agent, right? They're representing the buyer in yeah. this situation. They're representing the seller over here. And they've got to think the same. They, they can't think of it as, well, I've got to get insurance on this no matter what, because we're not going to close and I'm not going to get paid, right? And that, that can be the mentality sometime, but you can't. It's, it's scary, the technology. You know so, yeah, so the, the app that, that, that I was required as, a, as the homeowner, right, I had to go through my house and take the photos, right, all the interiors, um, right. under all the sinks, all the bath fixtures, everything. And it, uh, Sean Miller, it had me pinpointed, like laser focused in my house. My entire house was outlined, right, room by room, and it was walking me and directing me and saying, it looks like you passed a space, turn back. Oh, There's wow. no way. I haven't there. heard that. So let so check this out. I have a rental property that I was in the middle of renovating a bathroom. There was no workaround for that. We had to wait and let them finish the shower. I I couldn't go to the other bathroom and take photos because it recognized on GPS where in the house I was located. I was even thinking I'll go to another house, take a <laughs> Sean, take a picture of a bathroom. The guy was just doing towel work in a shower for me. I had to wait two weeks. <laughs> I mean, that's how, <laughs> that's how, that's how good it is. Right. With the tech, with the technology, you can't, it, it's really hard yeah. to trick. Oh, well, I God. knew a lot of companies were doing the, Hey, basically it's like a self inspection in a way, yeah. which I always, yeah. when they first popped up, I'm like, well, this is a great idea, right? It, it yeah. keeps you from having to have the client. I mean, the, have a inspection company come out. They're just wanting you to go around with this little app on your phone saying, go take a picture of this, take a picture of that. But I didn't know that they had it, uh, had it, it was, like that. That's good to know. It was high tech. It's like, oh, you've got to circle back. I'm like, dang. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. And when you're doing repairs, unfortunately, like that in a bathroom, that's considered damage, right? Correct. Yep. <laughs> in a way, there's something wrong. They don't want to see any of those things wrong. That's why they would require all those pictures. They're just making sure that there's nothing like that going on. And so, yeah, that's that's a kind of a sticky situation. That's why we tell people this has kind of been our rule of thumb for a long time is one of our main questions on our app, you know, on our intake form that we use when we, we talk to a client. Do you have any repairs planned within 30 days after closing? And if they say, no, yes, we're going to do X, Y, Z, I say, wait till after 30 days. That's what we tell people. So, yeah, that's, that's, and, hey, and, that's and, great. Guys, <laughs> that is a great tip because if they come knocking, you're going to be in big trouble. We, we all yeah. know that the, the, the day, the week they move in, they strip out a bathroom or a kitchen. We all know that. Yeah. And I, <laughs> this has been years ago, but I had, I had one where they, uh, they reported back to us, the inspection company reported back to us that there was a toilet sitting in the backyard. Right. And <laughs> which is kind of comical when we found out there's a toilet in the backyard was because they had gutted one of their yeah. bathrooms and they put everything outside. So toilet in the backyard is not usually a good, good thing. And you also like if they if they pull a permit for the roof prior to closing, that can be an issue with title as well, too. Um, so you, you don't want to start the work prior to closing and not finish it till after. So either do it before, you know, well, ideally, like you're saying, you know, do all the repairs before. 
That, or, that is the ideal now, situation. Yeah. Now, now, not only wait till, you know, do it right after closing. In some cases, you're saying wait till 30 days after closing to do your renovation. Yeah. The people that are coming in going, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to take, take out this bathroom, this kitchen, these kitchen cabinets are crap. I'm going to replace all that. No, it's fine. You can do that. Just wait, you know, don't do it immediately when you get into the house because they're going to come out and look at the house and you don't want to be in that situation because what they'll do is they're going to put it. Most of the companies will not cancel you immediately. What they're going to do is they're going to put a strict deadline. They want proof of repairs like invoice, you know, paid invoices, pictures of, of where all the repairs are being made. And they're going to make it a really strict timeline, maybe a week to two weeks. And what happens if you can't get it done that quick? Because it's whatever, you know, they're, they, they're waiting on parts or they're waiting on a cabinet to come in. Like we've seen a lot during the pandemic, right? It's like it took months for these for furniture to come in or the, these tiles to come in for the roof. So you just don't want to end up in that situation. Any questions about that? I mean, is there ever a time where you want to notify an agent that you're going to do major renovations to like, is there a policy or a builder's risk policy that, I mean, if you're going to come in and gut a house, right. Or, you know, you're doing some serious, serious reno. Are you talking um, about what, what, what during... yeah, like what, what, yeah. So, so what happens is somebody comes in, they buy the house, right. They're insured, mm -hmm. you know, six weeks later, they've got the house almost basically gutted, right. They're going to do a whole new, you know, it's a gut job. And then there, there's 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 something that goes on, right? A plumbing issue, right? Because the plumber didn't secure something, right? Nobody's living in the house, and a bunch of you know a bunch of stuff goes on, flooring, all that. Do you guys come in? What do you guys do with that situation? I mean, is that like well, okay, it's acceptable, or is that like well, you guys did you know this is the builder's fault? No, I think there's two different ways to look at it. If if it depends on uh, the time frame and the circumstance. If this is the plan all along, like if this is like, hey, this is a renovation home, you know, we need to go in and make, you know, do this, this X, Y, Z. Then maybe we don't need to write a regular home insurance policy. Maybe it does need to be a builder's risk or a vacant renovation policy. But that's when you're not going to be able to get a loan on it, right? Those are more of like, yeah. here's a one, two, or three month policy where we're renovating the whole place and th that's what those policies are for they're just basically some liability and, and coverage for the building structure itself let's write a three-month policy it gives you three months to get all the renovations done roof replaced kitchen build out whatever you need to do and then at the end of those three months then we come in and write a regular home insurance policy and all that so but that yeah. doesn't usually work on the loan side so that's one situation the second situation would be just like any of you that own a home if you decided that you know, I'm going to redo my kitchen. You don't have to call the insurance company and say, I'm redoing my kitchen. But what you would want to do, if you're doing any sort of renovation that's going to increase the value or the replacement cost of the home, that's when you want to call us, right? Like if you're replacing something in the home and putting some high end whatever in, right? Uh, roof replacement, we, we're going from shingles to tiles or we're putting in high end flooring or we're, we're putting an addition onto the end of the house. Those things affect the replacement cost of the home, and that's where we would need to make adjustments on our end. Okay. So don't that call your, your question. So or... don't, yeah, don't call you for anything. It sounds good. It sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> that's about nine. The nine out of ten will do, right? Yeah. <laughs> how, how, Jason, how do you know? Like, if a four points not provided, how do you even know what's in the house in the first place? Like, you know, um, if you know, you know, I I did my I purchased my house back in twenty eighteen. Uh, my house right. was less than 20 years old. I did not have to do a four point. Mm -hmm. How do you even know? Like there's super nice, like $25,000 worth of appliances, um, like awesome, you know, whatever, granite, um, awesome cabinets. How do you guys know right. what's in it? So what we would first do is we always go to like uh, Zillow or realtor.com uh, or we'll go to the, the property appraiser website and we'll see what they say. Right. And, and we'll see if we can get any pictures online and we'll ba because we always go in when we're calculating a replacement cost on the home through our own through the home insurance company system. Right. All these home insurance companies have a replacement cost estimate. I think we went over this a few months ago a couple months ago where they have that system built into their, their uh, quoting system. And so we will, I, I will personally, when I, what I quote, if I don't know the answer to those questions, I'll just ask like it, when I'm doing the replacement costs, is there anything that that's in the house that we need to know about and on the seller side? That's, that's usually pretty easy. You know, we can find out just, we base it off of whatever's on the, uh, on the pictures that we have. 
Um, now, where what you, I think what you're talking about, where that becomes relevant is where we have to know, OK, this home is 18 years old. We need to know, is the roof been replaced? Has the hot water heater been replaced? The electrical panel is going to be fine. The, the, usually the AC unit is going to be fine. It's all about hot water heater and roof. We need to know if those two things have been replaced, if the house is 15 years or old, or between 15 and 20 years old. And as long as we know that's taken place and we can get proof of that, yeah, we don't have to turn in a four point inspection, but we still need to have that information on our end uh, because that information is going to be asked on the home insurance applications for these companies. So and that so we have to consider the underwriting guidelines in situations like what you're talking about. Thank you. Yeah. And I, hey, I want to just. Yeah, go ahead. John Michael here. Uh, quick question. In what world or what situation is a four point not required anymore? So the rule of thumb, what we tell people, it used to be 30 years, right? You'd have companies that they'd start requiring them at 30 years, and then some companies were at 40 years, right? They was one of those two. Well, citizens last year, uh, early last year, upped their guidelines to 20 years. So they require four points at 20 years. Uh, some other companies have followed suit with that. So we just tell people across the board, 20 years. When a house hits 20, get a four-point inspection no matter what. Because because you, you don't want to say, well, maybe 30, because then you're there are options like citizens that you're not even going to be an option for on the home insurance side. So just I tell realtors 20 years, if, if it's 20 years or older, get a four point. Uh, and this is for acquiring new purchases or for, for individuals that already own the home and are living in it at that 20 year mark. No. So now that we have seen some companies recently start at renewal, if your house is a certain age or if in their system, it flags that now the shingled roof is 16 years old, that sort of thing, they will, you'll get a notice maybe three months before the renewal saying we need an updated four point inspection. And that's the reason they're asking for it from a current homeowner before renewal, they're wanting to know, okay, something's flagged in our system. The house is at a certain age. The roof is at a certain age. We need to see what the condition of the home is. So we have seen more and more of that at renewals. Okay, so we're not talking about new purchases here because, of course, you're going to need a four-point uh, in order to, to execute the sale. That's yeah, we are talking. Well, that example I just gave you is for, new home is for current homeowners, but for new purchases, yes, 20 years old or older, that's when on the seller side or the buyer side, you need to get a four point inspection when the house that is under contract is 20 years or older. And if it's less than that, it's not required. It would not be required. We would just want to know what the age of the roof is and the hot water heater. Interesting. Okay. And then the reason for that is 15 years is usually the cutoff for hot water heaters. That's, that's their useful life is, is, is a little less than that actually, but 15 years, and 15 years for shingled roofs, that's when the companies, the vast majority of companies say, we're not going to insure these homes unless the roof is less than 15 and the hot water heater is less than 15. That's why we would ask for the age of those once the house is that 15 to 20 year area, like what Sean was talking about. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, yeah. Hey, thank you. Um, I have a first time home buyer that's looking at a house excuse me, in a neighborhood that requires that the roof be replaced with tile roofs. And <clears throat> the, the roof is currently 19 years old. Um, is it possible that they would need to replace the roof before they could even get insurance, even though it's watertight? 19-year-old shingled roof? Tile. It's, it's tile. The neighborhood requires tile. So it's a 19-year-old tile roof. Correct. Oh, no, it's it's fine. Yeah, the 15 year rule is really mainly for shingles. There are some other companies that just have 15 for any type of roof, but that's basically companies that don't want to write any new business hardly. So there's still a lot of companies that are 20, 25, 30, 40 years for tile. Awesome. Thank you. OK, and thank I know we're you. short on time. Go ahead. I said thank you for that. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. The tile, the tile and metal, there's still options that are a lot more than 15 I, shingles you know, is, is where the 15 comes in i'm shocked that some of these annie to your point like some of these communities still require tile roofs and their deed restrictions yeah well it's, that's how they built them and they want uniformity in the neighborhood i know but with yeah. the, the cost just the sheer cost of replacement where are you talking are you talking down in seminal 
uh, Greenbrier in Clearwater. Okay. Yeah. And that's then crazy. Is, people have to take out a second mortgage just to do a, t a tile roof. <laughs> well, that's the problem, Sean. There's, you see a lot of that, like you, there's a lot of in Florida, the 55 and up communities, right, that they build like uh, mainlands, right? You're required to have a tile roof. And, and I mean, God, you're going to pay spend 40, 50, 60 grand just to put a little roof on. It's I nuts. I got a roof before you. I All did right. mine 30. Who do you use? B. Griffith, Rent Griffith. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Geez, I got clients that got quoted for some tile roofs, 80. 90, 100 grand on that. Well, house. that might be a bigger house. I've got 2,100 square feet plus a garage. Plus the garage. Gotcha. You're probably at, yeah, Annie, you're probably at about 25, 2,600. Yeah. 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 Roofing, roofing quotes is, that's where you definitely, probably nothing else on the house that you would want to get multiple quotes on more than roofs because there's such a big discrepancy sometimes. Um, I want to touch on one thing as we're closing because I know we're out of time. <laughs> I should have talked about condos ahead of time, but I did want to just take one quick minute because I know uh, I, I, I've got a couple of quick updates I wanted to give on that. Um, the condo legislation has kind of changed everything. We've got these milestone reports that are being required on homes that are the old condos that are 30 years old. Um, so basically, the good news that's kind of coming out of this, we know there's no way at all that they're going to get all these milestone reports done by the end of 2024. I know at the end of August, there were already 13,000 communities statewide that had requested milestone reports. And that number by the end of this past year was expected to be anywhere from 21 to 27,000 communities, right? There's no way that all those are going to get done. So based on what I'm hearing from some, some really respected realtors that and people that and, and a lawyer that have been going up and talking to the legislature up in State Farm, State Farm in the state capitol, um, there is an expectation out there that there's going to, that they have to make some sort of extension on these milestone reports that could be anywhere from three to four years past this 2024 deadline. So that's what we're kind of waiting on. The other big thing, going back to what Sean was talking about, the big thing about these milestone reports and all the legislation related to condos is it is going to gut, if there's no changes made, it is going to gut the 55 and older community as far as condos go. There's no way, and, and this is what they're telling us in these classes and things, there's no way that the state's going to allow that to happen. So they're hoping that they're in expecting some sort of carve out in the legislation that's going to be able to make some sort of exceptions or grant something to salvage the, you know, if the for those situations, right, 55 and older communities that are in a condo building that's the repairs are going to cost $3 million or $4 million. Well, who's going to fit the bill on that? You see what I'm saying? So I think the concerns that Sean brought up at the very beginning are mainly related to that um, because we are going to see some high, high, high fees as a result of these milestone reports. We are still seeing, uh, trying to requote and reshop a lot of those master policies that Sean was talking about at the beginning uh, because a lot of them are doubling in anticipation of a lot of this, and also because a lot of these condo associations don't have enough money in reserve to begin with. Um, they voted to not keep enough money in reserve, right? And so uh, the ones that are run really, really well, those are the ones that are gonna be in a lot better shape, so. Is it, can we, can we like, and, 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 and you can get that last question. Um, on next month's call, would this be, is there a lot more that you could talk about with this? Yeah, let's talk about it. Yeah, I, I'm talking to a realtor, one of the more experienced realtors with Keller Williams that I know. We're talking about teaching a class on all this condo legislation and how it relates to insurance and real real estate. It's 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 a huge, huge thing. And I've been trying to go to classes and forums that where they're talking about this. And so, yeah, I'd be glad to spend a whole lot of time on it if you want to. OK, and, and Jason, I have a I have an attorney that put together a really great PowerPoint. He reviews condo docs for buyers for like fifteen hundred dollars. I'll send you that. He might be one of the guys that I've and I'm trying to remember David his Ryder. name, but um, David Ryder. But he might be the guy that I've been hearing a lot about that I've met a, a few times when I've gone to sponsor some events. He yeah. is speaking at some of these events about that. So what is yeah, the milestone report before we cut off here? What What, what is the milestone report you're referring to? That's that inspection that's being required of condo buildings that are 30 years or older, right? And, th and three stories or higher. And let me add that part. If you've got a three-story or higher 
or a 30 year old condo, all those are being required to have a milestone report, which is basically a structural inspection to see if there's anything going on that needs to be repaired. This is all a result of what happened in Miami with the condo collapse. The Florida legislator rea legislature reacted to that and they threw a bill together that had so many errors and issues in it. They had to come back around and send out another fix of le legislation um, because they basically put this whole thing together in a week from start to vote a week. And it was crazy, right? They didn't think through a lot of the potential issues. They had to do something, right? You had hundreds and hundreds of people, hundreds of people that were killed, had to do something. So they tried to fix some of that and, th and that's helped, but the long-term impacts of this are gonna be devastating for a lot of communities. And that's where we're waiting to see what's gonna, what they're gonna change in the future on that. And Jason, when you're talking to these communities about the master insurance, a huge issue that we've run into in Pinellas is they're they're taking bigger deductibles to save money on the premium. Ah. And, that, and that's making the properties ineligible for traditional, you know, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac right. financing. I've yeah. I can't tell you how many deals I've I've lost because of that. Yeah. That's and a great hopefully point. There, hopefully those th those points, you know, that message is getting relayed to you know, the powers that be that make these decisions, like, you know, yeah. hopefully they're hearing, you know, that kind of feedback so they can make, you know, better decisions going, going it's forward. It's ultimately up to the owners, though. Yes, and there is there is some truth in that, for sure. Well, thank you for touching on all this. Yeah, if we want to, we can continue um, the, the the condo conversation. If you and uh, any other points that you didn't get to hit on um, in uh, the first uh, Friday in uh, February. February. Yeah, <laughs> we'll definitely do that. And if anybody has any questions in the meantime related to that, you know, please let me know. I, I definitely don't consider myself an expert on everything going on with the condo, but I'm trying my best to be to talk to the people that know everything and to be at the meetings where and the classes and things. Pro has honestly put on some great things for this. Uh, there's a pitch session coming up at the end of the month where um, they're bringing in the realtor that I know uh, that seems to know everything about this. And so that's going to be a big thing. I I'm sure a lot of realtors will show up at that as well, just to get some education. And he's the one that's one of the guys that's been going up to uh, Tallahassee a lot. So uh, there's a lot of opportunities out there to, to learn about it. I'm just trying to take advantage of it so I can share the knowledge. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for yeah joining our call again. Awesome yeah. information to know. And uh, yep, we'll be doing this um, on Fridays going forward, 9 to 9.30. Um, Florida Best Quote will be on the first Friday every month. We'll have a title company on usually once a month, um, Grace Payne from Southern Title. And then we'll try to have a guest speaker, like a appraiser, or accountant, um, financial planner that can give um, helpful information. So yeah. All right. Happy New thank Year. You.